part one on one with Mr. Bird. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Art One-on-One. -on -One. I'm your pod boss, Nicole Jordan, alongside your professional artist and master educator, Mr. Berger. We are back again in the okay. October Halloween season. And you know what that means. It's getting cold. Winter will be here soon. Yes, but no. I'm sure you're going to tell me. It's so. that ahead. time of season. That time of year where we start to think about the go ghosts and the goblins and the ghouls. The little kitties come into trick-or-treat time. Mm -hmm. And our local convenience stores or uh, grocers are coming out with great products. Like my friends at General Mills that have this great product called Boo Berry that I've been enjoying since I was a child. This product has been... Helping children get nourishment Stop for their that. breakfast needs since the since for, uh, my forever. That is not true. So today, I'm going to enjoy yet again, thanks to the Halloween season, yet another delicious bowl of blueberry. From General Mills. Now, do not forget that this particular product contains a great source of calcium. This product has 15 grams of whole grains per serving. Stop promoting this as healthy. That's and it also has my job. Honestly, 12 vitamins are, and no. minerals. There is nothing healthy about this. 12 right? vitamins and minerals. No. What's scary about that is that they advertise it as healthy when it is completely not. Here, let me read. No, 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 oh no. Saboteur. My students were telling me, and, and friends on uh, the uh, the internets have been saying that this is called a mukbang. What? A mukbang. Mukbang comes from our friends in South Korea, and mukbang basically means an eating show. And so you, if you have a show where you're eating, it's called a mukbang. So the beginning intro, you like how I changed the mood lighting to fit the blueberry? Is a mukbang. Welcome to Mr. Burger and the mukbang in this delicious bowl. It smells good, but it's awful. Oh my gosh, doesn't it? It does smell good. I can smell it. It's all that fake blueberry that they put on there. It's probably mm. just full of poison. It's delicious. I mean, so you go against everything with my trying to be a healthy person. Everything? You're telling me that I'm not a healthy person. Healthy, you are not a healthy person. You are not. Mm -mm. You don't good. exercise. You no. don't drink water. Oh, my gosh. Okay, whenever I ask you to walk, you go off walking with me. You don't drink water, which is the healthiest thing you can do. I, I drink lots of water. No, you do not. You rarely drink water. Rarely. And you eat, as, as I said in the last podcast, shit all the time. Mukbang. Yeah, you could start your own mukbang of shit show. Mm. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So, diving into this week's Halloween theme, I think I'm going to skip. Are you class. telling me, as a child, you never ate blueberry ice cream or blueberry? No, I, I mean, we had, like, the generic, every once in a while, we'd get, like, the generic, we got generic of everything, first of all, but, like, Fruity Pebbles. Mmm, Fruity Pebbles, good. But we had, like, the generic kind. We did not have a lot of money growing up, so we didn't buy the brand names of... My mom shopped at Aldi's, which now is, like, I love Aldi's. Aldi's has so many good options for organic foods, healthy foods, gluten-free. Like, they have good stuff. I'm, I love Aldi's now, but going to Aldi's <clears> back <throat> then in my... In Muscatine, oh, my gosh. It was terrifying, I think. <laughs> it looks so bad. I bet I, I will for. bet you anything that all these sells products like from great producers of great American I mean, products. You have random like stuff like General Mills every once in a while. Like And General Mills is an Iowa company. 
Well, this is made in Cedar I'm Rapids, not Iowa. This is good. I'm just saying it is not healthy for you. If you're trying to be a healthy person, you don't want to eat that. This so. is made from corn from Sorry, Iowa. Else, but Iowa corn. Oh my gosh. Makes what are the marshmallows made out of? I don't know. Yeah. Iowa pigs. I don't know. <laughs> There's probably like some. Ugh. I don't. I really don't know. Okay. Anyway, so. Speaking of mm. Halloween, we're going to go into... I'm going to jump into Journey into the Archives because you have a Halloween episode oh, of right. romanticism. Mm. On romanticism. From, oh, I see him. From four I, years I ago. I see what we're doing. Yeah. Well, we're, we're utilizing the Halloween thing. We're jumping into the archives yes. in Halloween. I said we're skipping us the archives for the moment. Okay. We're going into the romanticism yeah. video you have, the Halloween episode. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> it's a Halloween episode, mostly by title, and because it came out on Halloween. Okay, that's what I was wondering. What's Halloween about it? I mean... The music? The, the, well... The theme? The, the themes... This is and very then, different than your normal... It, because a lot of times, when you... When you... When students... talk When you talk about romanticism with students... Mm-hmm. Uh, they think it's romantic. That's what I would assume. They think it's like one of your... You already have indigestion. Do you notice that? So you can start they, coughing everything else from the dairy you're drinking and eating. And just watch. Just pay attention during this video. <laughs> pay attention <laughs> during the video. This is the important piece of today. Watching how his gut reacts to... The blueberries and the dairy. <laughs> Welcome to my world. Okay, sorry. Back to the Halloween you're, you're episode. Being, you're being a saboteur <laughs> of of art related content. People are coming on here because they want to get the best in art historical content. Yes. Not because they want to hear your critiques of what they should or shouldn't eat. <laughs> I'm not. I'm just saying. Don't you tell me not to make stuff or repeat stuff that's inaccurate and what you're saying is inaccurate. So, and I don't like it. I, I've never told you to say anything that was inaccurate. I just said you don't like it if things aren't reported or spoke about inaccurately. Right. Okay. So For sure. you are being very inaccurate with blueberry cereal. Let's be on. No, put that thing away and get talking about your video. 15 grams. <laughs> Per serving of whole grain, mm -hmm. Iowa grain, 12 minerals and vitamins. Okay. So what were we talking about? Romanticism. And, oh, yeah. And the fact that I would assume that romanticism is about romantic pieces. Yeah, of this, this isn't, like, when you think of romanticism, you're probably thinking about your porn <laughs> videos that you watch. I do not. Like, I have not watched porn. So do not say that. I've watched You porn. watch Fifty One Shades of Grey. That is not Fifty porn. Shades of, yes, it is. That is not Are porn. Are you kidding me? It, it absolutely is. Absolutely. Fifty Shades and the, what are the other ones that you watch? The the one about the guy that, the lady that time travels to get into a relationship and have sex with the English guy, the British guy, Scottish guy, Irish know. guy. I don't oh, the hell you don't. She jumps on the rock and she transports through time. Oh, that was a series. What was that series? I don't know. The lady that... I don't watch that for a while. She transports... With the red-haired... His name was Jamie. And he was... I do... I, Jamie was... Exactly. Porn. <laughs> okay, back to... Romance. See? See? Pay attention. Pay attention. <laughs> romanticism. So please tell us, as we're all on the edge of our seats, what is romanticism actually? Well, romanticism mean? deals with, like, it's a, it's a very different time, a distinct time. And romanticism has nothing to do with romance. It actually has to do with a, with a time period where uh, they're dealing with things that are adventure, they're war, it's, it's uh, astonishment, it's the sublime, it's these miraculous, uh, mystical things. It's dealing with things that are scary and deep stuff. Uh, very, very deep stuff. 
and um, they're, they're fascinated with mental illness and all kinds of things are going on at this particular time in history. And so a lot of their, their novels reflect this. We see novels like uh, Frankenstein come out of this time period. We see uh, The Hunchback of Notre Dame come out of this time period. We see lots of these sorts of um, novels that reflect that. We see the music of the time also being uh, very energized in this very same way. Uh, we see uh, music like Beethoven, which is, uh, uh, people thought of it as being indecent. People thought of it as being pornographic. People thought of Beethoven? it. Beethoven? Yeah. Uh, and during the time, it, it very much was seen as, as um, um, like... Like explicit, what not yeah, explicit. Yeah, very, very uh, inappropriate for for young viewers type of thing. Maybe Beethoven. we should start listening to Beethoven. Maybe, maybe <laughs> that should have a sticker, like explicit content contained within the disc. I don't know. But what I do know is... We not only see that in, in those sorts of, of arts, but we see that in the visual arts. We see that with uh, a variety of artists that come out of that time period, including J.M.W. Turner. We see it with uh, Goya and many, many, many others. What is it? Was it Nelson Atkins that divides the rooms into different time, like romanticism, I think gothic? A lot of the Nelson Adkins does do that, but Is that I, where I noticed that it could be. Yeah. We talked about this, before. but there are there are several art museums that have their collections organized by time frame or are most um, that way. The the vast majority, hmm. yeah, the vast Makes majority sense. are. Uh, so, for example, you go to the Louvre, you go to certain sections, and things are kind of compartmentalized by because it could be like region where it was in, no, I bet some, sometimes region it's, where it was sometimes it's made. regional like um like sometimes if you see by uh, artists, a, asian art or you see like chinese buddhist art it's a kind of all together you see like certain collections thinking about geography but a lot of times geography is also going to dictate style. The style of the region is going to be the style of the, you know, right. it's, it's going to be consistent throughout. So um, the style and the uh, the country becomes somewhat synonymous for whatever reason. But Does romanticism, and the only reason I'm asking this is because I think you pointed it out in the movie, does romanticism and gothic get... Mm-hmm. Um, Mixed up that's somehow. because of okay. that's because of our good friend Victor Hugo. Okay, expand. <laughs> you, you, as, well, as you know, being what are you a pausing? what are you waiting for me to say? Because I, I was waiting for you to say, "Oh yeah, that makes total sense." I have no idea what you because I just said one of the major books of that time was I the Victor Hugo. What? What? The Hunchback of Notre oh, Dame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Hunchback okay. of Notre Dame. Okay. And Victor Hugo wrote The Hunchback of Notre Dame. At that time, Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, the mm -hmm. actual center of the city is, is hinged on that cathedral. And that cathedral is a Gothic cathedral. And so people associate Gothic with the Hunchback of Notre Dame. People associate, like, I don't know if you remember, like, 10, 15 years ago, like, the, the craze of the teenager was, to some degree, some teenagers maybe, but not all, was like this Gothic emo style of whatever. So they dressed in black and they would put on white makeup and they'd want to look scary and skinny and wear, have skateboards. Did you say this was in the past? Like in like 10, 15, 20 years. Okay, well, it's big right now. What? That is big for people wearing that. In, yeah, right now. I don't know where. In schools. I've never seen that in a school I've ever been what? in. What? I said, what I. What are you looking at? Mm. I don't know. I think you're isolated. 
I don't it's think so. It's your school. Mm-mm. Like, there's... Mm-mm. Yes, it is. Oh, no. my gosh, you are. No, it's not. Mm-hmm. Not, not the way it was. Okay. Gothic... The, the, the goth kids were, like... Those were the kids in the 90s. Those were the kids in, the, like, the early 2000s. Those weren't kids of today. I'm saying people like to dress like that today, but make it like just we went and watched the band at homecoming the other day and they were all dressed in like gothic. No, they were. Yes, they were. You are out of your you don't think they were. Mind. No. With the black with the black on their eyes and their nails and their that's not gothic? That's not goth? It, it is, but okay, you also have to consider the fact that what was the what were they doing a performance of? Diddy. Correct. Diddy, they, what are they you were talking doing, about? The whole fucking show was about. But that's how people. That's how some of them dress in school. That was a show. That was a that was a marching band performance that focused on Halloween I music. That. I of course, it's. Oh my gosh. Jesus God, you are out of your mind. No, I'm not. I'm going to start taking. Well, I can't do that, but yes, yeah, there is taking, a lot of kids dressing like. Let's that start now. taking pictures of children. Ask, ask my kids. There are plenty no. of kids in their schools dressing like that. You are so... You think I'm okay. You are. You're isolated. <laughs> oh Element, uh, number one, elementary kids don't dress like I, that. I, I see the whole school. And elementary kids do not. Most of them. I don't. Junior uh-huh. high, yes. High school, yes. Okay. All right. Well, we'll agree to disagree. So, regardless of the time period, there was people... There is a style of wearing clothes known as goth. Right? But the thing is, the Gothic style, the true historic Gothic style was the Great Age of Faith. This is where, this is also known as the medieval style. This is where um, they're building cathedrals. They're, bu- they're building those uh, huge churches like Notre Dame that have a very distinct style. They're focused on religion. Their focus on that above anything else. Yeah, the, romanticism seems like that would be the proper terminology for that time frame, not it, gothic. But I do understand. And so, and so, as time went forward, you transition from a primary, like a gothic era, uh, the medieval time, into uh, other time periods. Fast forwarding into um, quite a long time until you get to to the romantic time period. And the Romantic time period, again, focusing on our friend um, who wrote The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Victor Hugo, uh, the main, one of the main characters in the book is the cathedral itself, which was a very old, decrepit, run-down cathedral at that time mm-hmm. in history. And so up in the bell tower lived Quasimodo, the, you know, the hunchback. Well, people associate, for whatever reason, they would associate the Gothic-style cathedral with being scary or spooky with Victor Hugo, but it wasn't. And it's romantic. And uh, where the actual term comes from escapes me. Uh, Why they call it romantic and how how that all transpired but what i do know is that it did and um victor hugo the hunchback of notre dame um frankenstein and dracula and all that stuff came out of the same time period Hmm. and um that was the romantic time period and so these artists that are focused in this video are all romantic and their work isn't particularly lovey-dovey. So why the choice of the music that you put in there? Was that just a Halloween theme? Right. Was that like the fear of the romanticism? Well, to well, that? Like what? I wanted to overemphasize that. I had never really... So the beginning of the video, if my memory serves me correct, the beginning of the video I give kind of a... like a lay down of what it was. Mm-hmm. And then I go through three or four, four or five artists. I can't remember. How many? I don't know how many. Oh, 
I thought you watched the video. Well, I did watch the video, so but I don't know how many artists you went There was like th through. three, five, I don't know what it was, artists that I talked about. Okay, so these are all examples of romantic artists. And then each one was like, this is Francisco de Goya. And then, boom. Then I play like music that kind of reflects like all of his artwork with like a musical theme to it. And, um, I believe that that, that, that video, it, uh, I don't, I can't, uh, I can't use it for monetization because that particular video uses, I know for a fact it uses like Rob zombie and mm -hmm. like white zombie yeah. or something. Yeah. And so they steal my money on it, but it's worth it because it, it emphasizes the point that I was making. So it does. That it does. So I'm willing to I'm willing to donate the money to them. Yes, because you're so rich. Wow. You money bags. Thanks to my good friends at General Mills, a great sponsor of Art One on One with Mr. Berger. They give me the vitamins and minerals that I need that gives me the courage with my friend Mr. Booberry. The courage to do what? To donate my money <laughs> to Rob Zombie. Okay. Well, I don't know. I don't know either, but that, that was a very different. I, I, I never made a video before or since that was quite like that one. And, and just I just in regard to like the music and the layout. Yeah. Like, like just like putting some content at the beginning and then music throughout the whole list, the back end. There's a all lot music. of like, if I, if I go in and search art artists, like for ask the art guides, like I try to research who could come up and ask the art guides. And, right. And like if, if I'm searching um, an artist, a lot of times it's just something that comes up that's playing music with portrait, you know, just their artworks. Yeah. That's what a lot of videos out there on YouTube of the artists are, what I found, because it's sometimes hard to find like a, an interview or a, like a, just something about a short, you know, like a short biography on an artist. Yeah. So. That's what makes me, uh, in some cases, inferior. And in some cases, superior. Because maybe I should make, be making uh, more just music videos of artists. Well, that doesn't... I mean, that shows you the pieces of art, but that doesn't give you the art history on it. That would defeat the purpose of the title of your... Yeah, I agree. Maybe you're right. Yeah. Maybe I should just keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah. Maybe it's perfect. Man. <laughs> yeah. I never what thought of it that way. What is the very serial doing to you? Your brain is high on sugar right now. Um, okay, so Ask the Art Guides is coming up next. Ask the Art Guides, our longest-running theme thing section. Which that, is something I would like to be a sponsor of, unlike Booberry Cereal. There's lots of great sponsors that are potentially out there. See, we just got to show them that we know how, how to do it. And when I put out the product and you're like, eh, that product sucks. But then, of course, they don't want to be a sponsor. Of course. But I'll tell you what, I'll promote them for free. There you go. So Good. our art guides have spoken, and what have they told us to talk about yet today? Marcel Duchamp. Marcel Duchamp? Weren't we just talking about him? Yes, last week? Were we? I can't remember. I think. No. I mean, No. No. No, not. Oh, not I thought you meant on Ask the Art Guys. No, 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 no. That was the picture of the. No, yeah, no. Um, it was the. No, he came up in conversation or something. I don't know. Maybe I'm. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't remember past episodes like you. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So Marcel Duchamp, and um, just what? looking at the card, I like. The second one, which was... No, the last one, which is Inspiration. No, no, no. Yeah. I, always get these mixed up. I don't want the last one. I want the oh. works. works. The work. The work. It Not is. but work. <laughs> With a K. Not an S. Work. Work. Sometimes. The work is... I love when you correct me. You're welcome. Making I'm here it, to help. Making it look easy is hard. I <laughs> just like this podcast. Make <laughs> making it look easy. It's but hard. In reality, it's just holy Moses. That is true, though. Yeah. 
Making it look easy is hard. Because Marcel did do some things that were very simplified. He wasn't the only artist that would do very simple things, very conceptual things. Well, he made it hard, though. I mean, doing research on him, he, he wanted to be different. He wanted to oh, yeah. reinvent himself constantly, change sure. things up constantly. So, of course, things are going to be hard when you're doing that. Yeah. I don't know. Do I mean, I don't know necessarily. You'd have to be the... Like, did he make it look easy? Like, looking at his life and history and works? Did he make it look easy? All those... I mean, at one point, he was... What? He, he pretended, or he had alter egos that he would, like, he did his work underneath. I think, I think so. It seems super stressful, the things that he did, and always trying to be different, and how did he start? What was, like, the... He started out as a cubist. Yeah, and then he, painter. he went underground and created, like, sculptures and things like that, didn't he? Um... Kind of. I don't know if he made ready mades. Ready mades. There you go. He did. He he did. He did do sculptural sorts of things, but mostly ready mades. What the heck is a ready made? I don't even know. I mean, I looking at that art, it makes sense, but define ready made. Okay, art can be art anywhere or not art anywhere, depending upon the context of where you see it. So it used to be like before Duchamp. It was, this is a painting, this is art. This is a drawing, it is art. This is a sculpture, it is art. This is a thing that is identified as art, so it's art. Okay. Everything else in the world that wasn't art was, okay, this is a microphone, it's not art. This is a uh, container to drink out of, it is not art. Those are glasses, it's not art. Like the, It's very identifiable what fits in the art bubble and what's not. Got it. Marcel Duchamp took that bubble of what was art and made it the whole world. So he would say, okay, this cup is, right, right now, it's not art. I mean, it was designed by somebody, and you could argue the artistic elements of it or whatever. Or a better example would probably be your glasses, right? Mm -hmm. So take a pair of eyeglasses. Is that art? Absolutely not. They're just a functional thing. It's just, a, it's just an object that you use. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that object and I'm going to put it on a pedestal. I'm going to put it under glass. I'm going to put lights on it. And I'm going to treat that everyday object as though it was a fine piece of artwork. And then it becomes fine art. Um, he took a urinal, laid it down, put it on, on a table and said, this is art. And argued that that was art. And... And fountain became a work of art, and it changed the way we think about art, which is this piece right there in the background. Can you oh, that's it? the urinal. It, it, it is like a piece of meat to me. <laughs> well, how do you get a piece of meat out of that? Outline. What kind of meat are you eating? It kind of looks like a penis too. <laughs> now you look at that. I mean, of course, you're going to think of something phallic, <laughs> foul, but look at that. There's no way in the world you can think that that, <laughs> that that. It doesn't look like a urinal. How does that look like a urinal? Well, it depends on your perspective of how you look at it, and I would imagine that you don't have quite the same level of experience with urinals as, <laughs> you know, 50% of the male population. Well, I'm... Very interested to see how that was able to be classified as art because that just does not seem, I, that just seems ridiculous to me. I mean, looking at his ready made, it was like, what? that's the point really? of it. The, the point of the ready made was to have something that was pre created, that was. That was utilitarian. What's hard about that? That was easy then. Nothing. There's nothing exactly. hard about it's it. It's cheating. But. It's not impressive. Making it look easy is hard. I understand that. But the other parts of coming it up, had alter egos. And coming up like with that, the idea is art. hard. That is. I mean, none of those things, things seem easy to me. Okay. Well, Change is always hard. And if you're constantly changing and evolving and creating new art, that does, there's no part of that that seems easy to me. Maybe he looked, made it look easy, but I didn't live in that time frame. You didn't. That's true. What else do we know about him? 
Anything oh, interesting about him? He's probably one of the most influential conceptual artists of all time. More artists are influenced by him, and he has had his fingerprint on more artworks being and, and more artists than probably any other artist in history. Well, because he dabbed in so many different forms of art, he did, I think. He did a little bit of everything. He knew just about everyone. He had an opinion. He was educated. He was he was a conceptual. He was thinking about things. He was always trying to think about how to approach things in a unique way. Yeah. Um, he That's was definitely an interesting character. Uh, you know, when you look at again, there are lots and lots of artists that come up with things in conception, um, how we think about things, and he was the master of it. You know. He, he was the first person to say that, you know, a urinal, uh, I don't need to make anything. I could just put that out and write my name on it yeah. and make that artwork. And it was argued. And he put it out there so people would argue. That's the whole point of it. The point isn't that it's art. The point isn't that it's difficult or easy. The point is that people are talking and thinking. And, and debating. Right. He wanted art to be appealing to the mind, not just the eye. And and if you're just like, eh, I, don't, I don't, I don't care. Is that art? I don't, I don't care. Then you're not involved. You're not involved in the interaction, the debate, the the deeper artness of the art. Whereas he wanted the people that had strong opinions on one side or the other to say, no, I do a lot of this sort of thing all of the time in my classroom, unhinged debate, uh, getting people to debate about things that uh, what is or what isn't, um, not because they're related to what we're doing, not because they're on topic, but because when you get people to debate and, and have a stance, and this is where I stand on the thing, then, okay, all right, now you're showing a passion. Now you're, you're you're learning how to defend your where you're at, right or wrong. So make sure you check me out on all the forms of social media because you will find Mr. Burger Art Art One Hundred One Art One on One with Mr. Burger all over the place. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully, you tune in next time and didn't get exhausted by our conversation as I did. All right.